Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. We've got an exciting sneak peek review for you guys this week. You know, a few weeks ago, I had a large and rather unassuming box arrive containing uh, the brand new Avios Grand Tundra from Hobby King. You know, this airplane really is a lot of fun, and it's got those big, awesome Chuck Norris tires. They're so big and awesome. You know, the earth doesn't push up on those tires. Those tires push the earth down as they impale the runway into submission. Now this airplane is ideal for some backwoods bush flying from an unimproved surface uh, and you know I had the perfect field in mind for this uh, when it arrived. So let's show you guys how this bird goes together and give you the lowdown on how it flies. So let's go! Now opening the box, the airplane is nicely packaged and looks good. Uh, you know, there are a number of parts and they're all packaged uh, pretty well. One of the things I really noticed was as a whole, the foam finish uh, is pretty smooth. Now I didn't have any instructions in the box, uh, but I was able to get the assembly completed without too much of an issue uh, without them. This was an earlier production sample, so I'm guessing that, you know, the instructions may have still been in work or something like that or there may be a digital download once this releases. Now that said, I think it's worth talking through the assembly a bit in some detail. Now I attacked the assembly first uh, by getting the landing gear onto the fuselage. The fasteners, they're all packaged with the gear, so be aware of that. Uh, so first up was to fasten the gear cross braces uh, for the two sets of struts. Uh, slip the fastener through uh, with the tubing spacer inside the brace and then fasten the nut down. From there, the gear screw onto the fuselage with some three millimeter machine screws. Lastly, those Chuck Norris tires were put on uh, and the rubber bands wound around the hooks on the gear, which create the tension for the shock gear. Uh, I can tell you those, that shock absorption works really well uh, at the field. Now, two rubber bands were used on each side. I will say that those big balloony tires are a nice soft foam rubber uh, and really work nicely in rough surfaces, especially adding in the suspension from the struts. From there, it was on to the tails. Uh, the rudder was put on first by slipping it into place and then fastening it on through the bottom fastener hole. From there, the tail wheel assembly was installed using the supplied wood screws uh, and then centering springs added. Now, finishing up the empennage, uh, the horizontal tails were slipped into place over the spar and then fastened down. There are seven screws total here for this. Uh, so two go at the root of the tail to fasten to the fuselage, four are used to fasten the support struts uh, and then the last one fastens the two elevator halves together. Finishing up the assembly, the wings are installed, slipping them over the carbon spars, and then using the supplied machine screws uh, to fasten it down. The wing support struts are all held in place using cotter pins. A note that you do have to screw the two wing braces uh, together before putting them on the airplane. The cotter pins themselves, they were pretty tight at the fuselage junction, uh, so you may need to use some needle nose pliers uh, if you're having difficulty getting them on. Otherwise, that was the heart of the assembly. Now to wrap it all up, you know, the servos were connected and set up, the, uh, the prop was installed, and then the final radio installation and CG was performed. Also, all of the Vortex generators were added as well uh, by putting them in place and then gluing them with some thin CA. These are there to intentionally turbulate the flow uh, so you avoid getting any kind of laminar separation. So what you get then is an airplane with really good slow speed characteristics. So for the assembly, as you can see, it was a pretty simple setup and everything went together well. Uh, I did have a bunch of spare fasteners, so uh, hopefully this thing holds up. Actually, the airplane is set up for optional floats and FPV, uh, so I'm guessing that that's what those bits are for. The airplane is a great size and really takes up a lot of space on the bench, and it looks good doing so. There's no question looking at the airplane and how it's proportioned that it should fly really well. 
Uh, it definitely has a good bush plane look to it, uh, and the color scheme is decent. Plus, you know, it's got lights throughout, which is a nice feature. One thing that I should note is that the airplane comes uh, with two propellers. It has a black 17.8 for 4S operations and then a white 16.8 uh, for 6S operations. We flew both uh, and there are some differences for sure, but it flew great with either setup. In terms of the control surface setup, you know, not having any instructions, I took a notional guess from the start. Uh, and actually found those rates to be about perfect for my flying style. I always recommend setting up multiple rates which allows you options during a maiden uh, should any control axis be too sensitive or not enough. Uh, then once flown you can tune in the rates to your desired feel in the air. You know the airplane is surprisingly aerobatic and does anything you would want to do with it. So ironically enough think one inch for your starting rates uh, and then tune from there. These were my mid rates and I didn't find reason to change them at all from the maiden. So for elevator, one inch each way with 5% expo. For aileron, a one inch each way, 5% expo also. Uh, and then for rudder, again, one inch uh, with 15% expo to desensitize the steering. Uh, and then for flaps, I had one and a half inch max with no elevator mixing. Uh, you could potentially get more if you wanted to out of it. Now for the CG, I found that 60 millimeters as measured from the wing leading edge aft uh, was about perfect and this actually equates to where the forward wing brace pin is. So simply lift the airplane with your fingertips on that pin uh, and look for the aircraft to be level or have a slight nose down attitude and you're good to go. As you fly the airplane you can look at moving the CG back if you like as it was maybe a touch nose heavy there uh, but I really liked it at that location. For batteries, I'm using Roaring Top 35C 5800 milliamp hour packs, uh, both 4S and 6S. For the 4S pack, uh, the battery ends up completely forward in the battery bay, as you can see, uh, and then the 6S pack falls in a little further aft, uh, as you can see here. With these packs, I have my timer set at five and a half minutes, and I could probably fly for another five minutes easily if I wanted to, especially with the 4S setup. Now I wasn't sure what to expect from this airplane when it arrived truthfully as I wasn't fully aware uh, that it was being released. But I tell you what, it's pretty darn awesome. Uh, as a whole, regardless of 6L or 4L, uh, the airplane just flies great. The shock gear work great and really help on unimproved surfaces. It's extremely aerobatic and has great power. Uh, on 6Ls, man, the airplane is just ballistic. It'll get off the ground in no joke about two feet uh, and climb straight up with pretty much unlimited vertical. Uh, it'll hover if you set it up right and do just about any kind of flying uh, you can handle. And it's actually quite quick too. On four cells, uh, the airplane has a much more scale-like power to weight ratio and flies more like a true Alaskan bush plane. It still gets off the ground in short order and has good vertical, just not the unlimited that you get on six cells. The interesting thing is I, I definitely felt the weight difference between the two setups and actually preferred flying the airplane on four cells just a little bit more. It makes for a bit more of a challenge in the air, forcing some of that energy management. Plus, at the lighter weight, you know, it cruises around partial throttle wonderfully for those touch and goes. The one flaw we did find as we flew the airplane was that the aluminum used for the tail wheel attachment is really soft uh, and it bent pretty easily. We flew the airplane a ton uh, while we were getting video and uh, we were regularly bending the tail wheel back into place. Now shortly before this airplane arrived I had discovered a new dirt field fairly close to me uh, and I knew that this would be the perfect spot to showcase uh, this Grand Tundra and show off those awesome Chuck Norris tires. So here are a couple short flight videos of the airplane uh, on four cells, followed them by six cells. If you'd like to see the full uncut videos, click on the icon in the upper right corner uh, as I have links there. Check it out guys, and then we'll wrap this up.
take that. All right, we're out here. We're flying the Grand Tundra. Uh, and it's got the world famous Chuck Norris tires. Yeah, those are a nice uh, feature. So we're out here at some undisclosed location, San Diego, California. And uh, here's what we have to deal with. But you notice the tires on the Tundra, the Grand Tundra, stay perfectly clean. Perfect. It's like we've stepped in the world's largest duke. It's nasty. <laughs> but having a good time. Yes, we are. How's it fly? Awesome. It's got lots of power. Six cells, it's like a rocket goes straight up yeah. until space. It does all the snap rolls and all the things you need to do as a bush pilot. So Obviously. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna get some more flying in. Yeah, I want to do some touch and goes. Touch and goes. Cool. <laughs> okay guys, there we have it, the Avios Grand Tundra. This is really a fun airplane and it just flies awesome. Uh, it'll be fun to see what you guys do on the FPV side too, you know, as there's hardware and a canopy hatch that allows you to set all of that up. It's nice to have options on the power system too. This allows you to really tailor your flying experience, whether you want a more kind of 3D experience or something powered more like a scale airplane. So at the end of the day, this airplane looks good, flies good, and I think it's Chuck Norris approved. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. Uh, I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com, with links to everything. So don't forget to check that out. If you'd like to see some of the other reviews that we've done, you can see those here. Or if you want to see some awesome jet flying, you can see that down here. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you at the field.